Welcome back to Bite Size Bible Studies in uh, Philippians. Today we're moving into chapter 2. We're going to be reading uh, the first four verses today. Uh, it'll be a bit of a word study um, because we need to explain a couple of the terms in this section. And then uh, that'll prepare us for our next episode, which we'll be looking at the big uh, section on Jesus. So I'll, I'll read the first four verses for you. If there is any encouragement in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any deep feeling and compassion, make my joy complete by thinking the same way, having the same love. Be of one accord and one mind. Do nothing out of rivalry with one another or with pride, but in humility esteem others beyond yourselves. Look out for the interests of others rather than your own interests. I kind of section together different meanings of the words there for you. Now, Paul uh, is uh, encouraging the Philippians that uh, these aspects uh, should be evident among you. Remember, he's already emphasized the attitude and uh, how they and we should live. And he said, now these aspects of life should be evident among you, uh, how you express this life of the gospel together. And the first thing he says, uh, he says, if, not, not if, uh, or since better, since there is these things. Um, he says, if there's any encouragement in Christ, first of all, um, the practical expression of being in Christ, of being believers, uh, uh, this word encouragement, interesting word because uh, I guess we would say a closeness and intimacy um, it, it the word used here is um, in Greek it's called paraklesis um, and it uh, it comes from a legal term uh, meaning one who's called alongside to help you uh, Jesus uses it to describe the Holy Spirit in John fourteen sixteen, where he calls him the comforter or the counselor or the advocate and um, a paraclete, which is the word, uh, was someone who knew you intimately, who shared your life and could speak for you. So he's saying here, if you've got that intimacy and that closeness with one another, um, that's really important. The next thing he says is if there's any comfort of love or consolation of love. And the word, of course, their love is agape. <clears throat> That word uh, only occurs once in the New Testament, and, and this is that occasion. Uh, the word comfort or consolation you might have in your translation, it, it's, um, it's a comfort that's produced by soothing words and actions. It's a, that's a lovely thing. It's a comfort that's produced by soothing words and soothing actions. I, I guess we would say um, it's an expression of kindness which is a really important aspect of the church's life. So Paul is saying, I'm expecting this to be among you. I'm expecting love to be uh, affected through your way you speak to each other, the way you are with each other, that your words don't grate, your words are, are not cruel, but your words and your actions are kind. You're not causing harm to each other. You're not rubbing up against each other the wrong way. Of course, he'll deal with that later in the letter. But that you're, you have a soothing effect on each other. You bring calm and peace. The next thing he says is, if any fellowship of the Spirit. Uh, of course, he's already talked about fellowship. And uh, again, the, it's our word koinonia. It keeps coming up and coming up and coming up all the time. Basically saying that uh, your, your life as believers together is expressed your common life is expressed through your relationship with the Holy Spirit. That every one of you has the Holy Spirit and that as a community you uh, base your whole life on the Holy Spirit. Uh, <clears throat> then the next thing he says is um, if you have any, you might have affection in your translation. Um, I, I put deep feeling here because the, the word is, it's a funny word. Um, and it's the word that the Greeks used to translate the inner organs, the heart, the liver, and the kidneys, and things like that. 
uh, and you wonder why on earth would they do that? Well, in their thinking, um, the uh, internal organs were often seen as the seat of emotions. For, for instance, um, the, the Bible talks about having bowels of mercy, and uh, we won't go into that anymore. But um, they believed that when you felt with something, like when your heart raced, in a time of emotion or something like that, or you felt a particular pain in your body, that was uh, uh, a seat of an emotion. And so they understood <clears throat> that uh, this word wasn't just for the natural parts of the, of those bo uh, the body that they represent, but what they represent in emotion. And it really means a deep feeling. As we would say, my heart was pumping, my heart was racing. It, it's that idea. Uh, and so he's saying, I want you, not an affection like in a fondness, but having a, a deep feeling for each other, that you care passionately for one another. And then he says, if there is any com compassion. Um, again, that, uh, that's, a, that's a word of great deep feeling, not just feeling sorry for somebody. It's, it's more like having an empathy of an understanding uh, and that word uh, that we translate compassion means to have a, another deep feeling um, regarding someone's difficulty, someone's misfortune for those who are in difficult circumstances and situations or have fallen on hard times. That uh, it's a compassion. Um, it's a bit like the Good Samaritan. He had compassion on him. You find Jesus having compassion on people. And they're all very strong and powerful aspects of our life together as believers. You see, Paul is beginning to get very practical now in the letter. The result of all that, Paul says in verse 2, is that, well, you, by that you, you'll make my joy complete by thinking the same way, by having the same love for one another, that you are of one accord and that you are of one mind. Of course, that smacks to us of oneness again, of corporate life. And it's another reminder for the church and a reminder for us that our Christian life, even though we must all have an individual walk with Jesus, an individual relationship with God the Father and the Holy Spirit, we're actually a corporate people. We are one people. We live for one another. Um, you see where he's going to go when we come next week to, to or next time to look at Jesus. And so he says, um, practically speaking then, because he's very aware of the tensions and the difficulties that can arise uh, in, in uh, Christian communities, sadly all too easily where we forget the Holy Spirit. He says, verse 3, do nothing out of rivalry with one another or with pride but in humility esteem others beyond yourselves. So he really hits to the core and he says, now uh, there should be no rivalry in the house of God, no competition with one another, uh, no jealousy in the house of God, in the family of God, no factions, no taking sides. That was the problem in Corinth where people took sides. They all preferred different kinds of people. He said no favoritism. Um, no suppression of people, uh, no putting yourself up above people and pushing people down for your own ambition. And that's why he says, uh, don't do anything uh, with pride, um, self-promotion. Uh, pride in the Bible is seen, if we can grade sins, which I don't suppose we can, uh, pride is probably the worst one because pride was the cause of Lucifer's rebellion, Lucifer who became Satan. If you read Isaiah 14, 12, it says you, you were proud. And, as, and Ezekiel talks about that, uh, describing him, Ezekiel 28. Uh, pride was found in you. And uh, that was the cause of Lucifer's rebellion, cause of the fall of, of mankind. So the Bible comes down very, very hard on pride because pride is self-promotion. Pride says it puts me as number one, with me at the top and everybody else is below me. It's all to do with self-promotion, self-interest, as rivalry are, is. And uh, so Paul says, I don't want that. Uh, that's not to be in the house of God. And then, uh, so he finishes 
this little section by saying so um, be humble uh, and humility is exp expressed in this way esteem others beyond yourselves uh, he doesn't say um, put yourself down think of yourself as nothing no the Bible doesn't teach that but he says um, esteem others respect others honor others beyond yourself um, and finally he says this look out for others rather than you my translation has uh, in, you know look out for yourself and others but it doesn't really mean that it's not like well I look after me then I'll look after you he says no don't worry about yourself um, don't care about yourself yes you, you have to look after yourself he said but you look out for others um, not to yourself and all the time he's in this section we've been looking at this morning he's been pushing the believers away from a self-centered Christianity a self-centered faith a me faith a me religion one that's just for me um, which really is one of the problems of today and uh, he said I want to push you out to think of others live for others it's all about others not you uh, and that is all preparing us then for where he's going to go and we'll look at that next time because he now will give us the supreme example of someone who lives exactly that way and of course that's Jesus so we'll pick it up uh, next time and if you want to you can read uh, the next section uh, in chapter 2 which talks about uh, Jesus and how he came and how then he was honored and given the name above all names so uh, we'll see you next time have a great time